Perfect. Once again, welcome to today's Tech Talk, um, Marantis Labs on CICD using GitLab and Argo CD. We are so excited to have each and every single one of you today. We have two awesome individuals with us, one being Sugesh and one get, being Pratik. Sugesh, Pratik, would you like to say hello, maybe give a little bit of bio about yourself to the audience? I'm sure they'd be very interested in hearing a little bit about your expertise, where you're from, and what your role is here at Marantis. Uh, hello, all. Hi. Yeah, so to start with, uh, my, uh, my name is Sugesh Nair, and I'm located in Pennsylvania, United States of America. And uh, my role with Mirantis is more on to DevOps and uh, developing the Kubernetes uh, clusters and uh, getting the applications associated with it. So I had started my career like around eight years back uh, into operations background from where I gradually grew up into a DevOps engineer. So nice to meet you all. Hello everyone, uh, this is Pratik. So I work as a DevOps engineer, uh, uh, right now working uh, as a uh, engineer with the DevOps uh, uh, care platform. And uh, I have been working on DevOps for the past uh, five to six years. Initially, I worked as a build and release engineer. So uh, that's a bit of a background uh, of me. And, and for the past few years, I have been working on uh, Kubernetes and the cloud platforms. Uh, so that's, that's more about me. Excellent. Well, thank you both for giving a quick highlight on your bio and your background. Everyone, we have an exciting, exciting talk today. We'll go through some slides initially. And after the slides, we are going to jump into an in-depth demo where you all can take a look, follow along and so forth. We will be shipping the slides and the demo in a video format as well as a PDF format after this event, either today or tomorrow. Lastly, we do have a disclaimer that this is for informational purposes only. So I like to throw this on the slide real quick, give it uh, about five seconds or so, and I'll just remove this. Perfect. Our featured presenters already gave their background, so we'll be able to skip through this slide. And from here, I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen and then open it up to Sugesh so he could share his screen, walk us through some line, slides, and then they will transition, as mentioned earlier, into a, a demo. Sugesh, feel free to take it away. You should have the ball. Yep. Uh, let me share my screen. Yep. So uh, let me start with, uh, hello, uh, good day to all of you. So uh, to start for the today's agenda, so we would be basically covering an entire GitOps CI/CD pipeline, which would be including the tool sets uh, in, uh, such as GitLab, Argo CD. And we will be actually uh, having a um, a brief tour onto the device of GitLab as well as the Argo CD. And we'll be going deep into the concepts like what and all we will be em employing in here and what and all will can come handy in the future if you want to add some additional aspects to your application. So to start with the GitLab. So what exactly is a GitLab? So we all know we already have so many Git utilities in the market to uh, use it as code management. So we we would be knowing like there is a GitHub and there are other uh, and source code management tools too. So why exactly GitLab? So to answer that question, we should be answering an, another question, which would be what GitLab is not as compared to GitHub. So uh, usually uh, when we talk about GitLabs, uh, the main question that arises in our head is how is, Git, how is GitLab different from GitHub? So just to start uh, quickly on that, let's, let's jump onto a different screen. I'll give you a, a basic tour of the GitLab UI and then we'll be uh, answering the question like how GitLab is different from GitHub. So this is usually how uh, a dashboard of a GitLab looks like. From here, we can actually create our projects, view our projects, the environments. So, and we can have our favorite projects, like whichever we would be using more frequently. We can actually see a complete UI, which would uh, look similar to the one we have already seen on our regular GitHub. It has uh, uh, it has the commits, which we has the branching details, and 
it which includes the files and the uh, the source code which we might have pushed onto our repository. This is the auto dev of it, it usually includes a complete kit ops to the three and um, until the last stage of the deployment. So for now we would we wouldn't be going into that part. We would be in using OCD for the deployment purpose. So we are skipping that for now. A UI which you might have already seen on GitHub, which would be including the branches which uh, our project has. We can clone it, and uh, we, we 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 can actually switch the branches, and we can actually see the configuration have in our other branches. branches. We can even add the readme file, uh, uh, which is similar to the one GitHub. One. So uh, if, if we go to the CICD section here in the, in the page to the pipeline, we can actually see how GitLab is different from GitHub. I'm really sorry, I think it's delay. It's no problem. Sorry about that. So th this is the basic uh, uh, pipelines which we have run, and this will be off from where the merge has happened, from which branch has the pipeline, and so. So we take one of these. Uh, so we, we, uh, we check the passwords, but we can uh, look at the one that has failed, and we can actually address the issue there. So uh, if if we uh, see here, for this pipeline, out of which one has failed, and in in here we can actually one has. And which one has passed? And we individual build using this click here. Now, if we go to build, has passed. We can actually see a complete a complete CLI commands which have been run at the back end, and along with the builds on the right side. So we can also trigger the pipeline. We had C screen as well. And Sugesh, real quick, um, one of our audience yeah. members has mentioned that GitLab has been a bit wonky today and seems still unstable. And this may be some of the reasons why you're running into some of these stability issues. So I just want to bring that to oh. your attention. Okay. I, okay. So that. It's from my end. Thank you. Thanks a lot for bringing that up. Yeah. So, so the this is the basic uh, the jobs that were run for the uh, build job. And if we go on to the top, we would be seeing uh, like the job by uh, the line saying running with a GitLab runner. So this is the poll. This is GitLab differs from GitHub. So GitLab actually offers few for us to run our CI/CD pipeline. So what Git, GitLab, uh, the GitLab is, uh, doesn't actually do and uh, run our job. The, our jobs are run on the GitLab runners. The GitLab uh, server just uh, shows us uh, UI and it pulls the data from the database and presents it on the screen. The entire uh, job, uh, the, like uh, building of the jobs, pulling up pipeline, everything is done on the runner. And talking about the runner, GitLab actually offers uh, for for the learning purpose, uh, starting off like I think, of a shared runner. 
and uh, for for any person any people uh, anyone who have uh, like curiosity to learn on that can actually get uh, they might be asking for a credit card details but they will they'll be deducting a dollar and refunding it back it's just to uh, avoid the misuse of of these runners so uh, so yeah so uh, so for now in this job i have I have uh, used a shared runner. So a runner is basically uh, an agent that would be running in the back end of uh, GitLab, which uh, pulls the, uh, the the pipeline and uh, runs the comp compiles the complete code, runs uh, the entire job, and uh, like shares the output to the uh, GitLab server. And we also have the artifacts. Uh, my uh, build job and get it saved uh, on and and pass it on to the other job we, I, i'll show you show you show that we can also switch to the jobs from this place here now uh if we go to set and ci cd here we can actually see the here and we can also provide the uh variables line uh, we can also select if uh, how long do we need to store the artifacts we can uh, uh, so generally an artifact would be uh, uh, the features of the artifact can be mentioned in the pipeline if we need to uh, the expire we, we can mention the expiry of the artifacts if we need to keep the artifacts for 10 minutes a day a week or a month and so and uh, we can also provide the environment variables from this section and this is the portion where we mention the uh, runners so to start with, so the, these are the shared runners available at the moment uh, by the GitLab, and uh, we uh, we can also uh, run our jobs up for a, a dedicated server. So the these uh, blue sections which you see here are the associated with the shared runners. Now, at at, at the moment we have forty three runners available. Scroll down, you can also see the runners which are actually not accepting and are offline for now at the moment. But uh, we, we, if we keep on checking periodically, they, they might come up if, if we have a dedicated application which has to be on a GitLab or Docker, uh, then we, we might have to wait for some time as this is a shared service and uh, and yes, it's free. So yeah, so we might have some time along. We can also uh, get our GitLab associated with local runners. On the left side here, these are the available specific runners. So th this is my, and I have set this uh, runner up on a local virtual machine. And uh, like I have got it associated with the GitLab. Now, like whenever uh, I'll be running as a job, and if I mention like in, in my pipeline, I can actually mention like, where do uh, I need to, uh, run my job so if i'm when i mentioned my job has to be run on a local runner it would be uh, coming running my job on this specific runner which we can see from uh, to test a runner uh, locally on a virtual machine which we can also get the, those runners associated with uh, containers and uh, and different features as well actually uh, and i called my local runner just mentioning a tag in my cic uh, like i had i had Job on my uh, local runner. So if you see here, uh, the runner uh, I had selected is my, which was the same which we had uh, seen at the uh, in the in the pre uh, section. So if you see the tags are associated here. So yeah, uh, jumping back to the presentation. So that was a minor uh, tour of GitLab and like how, how GitLab is different from the other CI CD, like uh, other source code management utilities we have. So, th so these are the basic uh, the types of the runner which we have right now in the market. So the shared runners, uh, the group runners and the specific runners. The shared runners, as we already know, those are maintained by GitLab and uh, those are the uh, virtual machines or, or probably containers provided by GitLab and which are uh, free for us to use, you know, and uh, which uh, obviously have limited hours uh, for the free account. 
and the group runners and specific runners are can they, they these can either be on the local or be on the uh, uh, on the shared runners we, we can actually group a bunch of the runners and use them for a dedicated application for example if my uh, if my application is a node.js or or a python application we can uh, select a uh, we can select a bunch of the runners and use them for my uh, my my framework and keep it for the same so that is the basic concept of this uh, uh, and this can be uh, this can be achieved on both uh, the uh, local as well as the uh, shared runner perspectives so the, yeah this we, we have already seen this and uh, like this is the section like uh, of the uh, with the left section uh, shows us how the local runners would be looking like and the right side would be the uh, available shared runners yeah so uh, jumping on to argo cd so uh, how exactly argo cd comes into picture in, in here and where exactly can we fit in uh, the the deployment utility so argo cd is uh, a similar utility which we have in uh, in the market such as flux or fleet uh, so, uh, in in argo cd we would be actually installing the utility onto our cluster onto our kubernetes cluster which would be consistently monitoring the state of our cluster with, with a source of truth as a gitlab or github in place for with this project perspective we'll be considering it as a gitlab so uh, here gitlab would be the source of truth and any configuration change that has been made on the gitlab repository that would be instantly pushed onto our repository uh, by just a push command on our git so why exactly uh, do we use a, a GitLab and what are the challenges we, uh, we, we face in here? So if we consider GitLab as a complete CI utility, it, it, it is completely far-fetched. We, we know like we can actually uh, push our source code, uh, get it integrated, get it deployed. We can achieve a complete CI CD pipeline using GitLab. But why, where does uh, Argo CD add its importance is like uh, the, the section where uh, we lo lose the visibility of the deployment for example now i have pushed my code and i don't uh, uh, now the, so, so the code has been deployed from there i wouldn't be having much visibility on what exactly is happening at the deployment end and uh, like has the source code deployed yes or no that would be the only answer but if it has failed at what what stage has it failed and what are the remediations that can be taken and so can be monitored at the argo city level moreover uh, argo city integration helps us uh, to not to share our kube config or uh, the our credentials uh, with the, with uh, the deployment utilities for example if uh, i uh, if my cloud is if my cloud components are hosted on aws then i might have to share my credentials for the aws machines and uh, then uh, get the uh, my my gitlab integrated with my cluster and so so uh, so uh, adding an argo cd would be indirectly uh, reducing our security vulnerabilities so that is an additional feature why would why uh, usually companies prefer going off going off for a uh, different utility uh, for deployment and argo cd can be deployed using uh, kubectl helm and so so that that's pretty handy when it comes to use and uh, this is the main uh, portion which i was talking about uh, so uh, on the right side we can actually see our cluster which has an argo cd agent installed in it which would be consistently monitoring our our gitlab repository from where it would be putting, pulling up the change and uh, getting it associated with our cluster as soon as it sees one now i i'll, I'll switch my screen just to uh, give a, a basic uh, a tour of argo yeah so um, this is how it would be uh, looking uh we can actually add our repositories here for now i have added a gitlab and a github a repository so this would be this is the application as a demo for now for this session i have uh, uh like uh, added for this uh, on on the argos and uh, the other one is the one which actually maintains my repository so if we go back to our repository screen we can actually click on the application and see the tree and the resources and what exactly are the configurations and events and the manifest files as well 
and we can actually uh, uh, add an application and set it for manual sync as well as auto sync so that would basically mean as soon as there is a git push recognized by argo cd that the changes would be automatically pushed on to our kubernetes cluster and if we want to avoid that we can uh, actually set it to manual which would be giving us an authority a control on our hand whether to push the changes or not so i think uh, this is the basic uh, ui for argo and uh, i i'd let prateek take take it up from here excellent thank you sugesh that was a great overview for me at least and i hope everybody in the audience as well thank you very much hi i'm glad you like so uh, so this is what the demo is going to cover uh, so what what we have is uh, we have a github repo uh, where the application source code is residing. Uh, we have a GitLab which is integrated with a GitHub uh, and it's going to pull the changes from GitHub and trigger the uh, CI part for you. Uh, it's, it's going to make few changes into uh, another GitHub repository and this repository is actually uh, monitored by Argo CD. Uh, so basically, if, if there is any change uh, in this particular repository, uh, as as uh, Sugesh already showed, right? So some we have uh, uh, Git repositories which are configured on the Argo CD. So if any changes are done, the Argo CD will pull those changes and apply those changes to the Kubernetes environment automatically for you. Uh, obviously, then uh, we have uh, a CI part which actually creates a Docker image. It's going to push the Docker image to Docker Hub, and and in the Kubernetes, it's it's going to pull the uh, it's going to pull the image from Docker Hub and start with the containers. So this is uh, just an overview, like what, what is uh, across the demo. Uh, so I will probably switch to the demo now. So we have this sample repository. Uh, and in this sample repository, uh, we just have a simple Docker file. Uh, it, it, it uses Nginx image. Uh, there is one argument. Uh, then, then it's actually echoing the... Uh, text content uh, to the index.html, which is residing in the Nginx. So uh, once the application or once the container starts, it's going to display this particular text message uh, onto the web page uh, into the environment. So this is just a simple image that would be created. Also, uh, we have uh, a GitLab ci.yaml file. Uh, so if I go through the YAML file, we have two main stages, which is a uh, build stage, uh, which is actually run into a Docker container. Uh, we use a Docker uh, login command. Uh, we do a build uh, of the uh, image. Uh, then it's pushed to the Docker Hub registry uh, with, with the tag name. And also same image is also pushed with the uh, latest tag. And we have few conditions across it, like uh, for executing this particular stage, if if someone commits a push uh, and, and it's something related to, or it's something happening on the dev branch and the QA branch, then only this particular stage would be triggered. Similarly, we have uh, another stage, which is deploy. Uh, so uh, it's actually not doing any deployment stuff here. It's, it's more of like, it's going to update uh, the image a tag which is created here uh, into our application and and uh, and it's going to pull up the latest image and all those configurations so so in this thing uh, we are just going to uh, do the ssh to the github repository uh, and we are going to commit few changes so in, in the script part uh, it's it's going to clone the repository uh, it's going to do a set command uh, basically we are going to uh, overwrite the old image with the new image uh, into the customization YAML file. Uh, and, and we are going to just add this file, uh, commit these changes and push it to the uh, GitHub repo. Uh, again, there is a condition associated with it. Uh, so this is just a basic uh, CI flow or CD flow what we are going to do. Uh, but, but the Argo CD is uh, going to come into the picture once this set command executes and once you push the uh, code to the GitHub. So this is uh, just an overview. Uh, once we go through the demo, I think uh, everyone will be able to understand what, what we are trying to do. Uh, I will first go to the GitLab. 
so there is a way to uh, uh, there are different option gitlab also has uh, source code management so uh, so right now what we had done is we are using github as the source code management so that's an external uh, source code management tool which is integrated uh, so for that what you need to do is uh, if you go to the gitlab uh, you have to create a project you just have to uh, run ci cd so there are different options like you can create a blank project you can create a template you can import a project uh, and and there is an option for running the ci for the external repository so once you click that uh, there is an option for github uh, you need to select github and it's uh, by default i have already integrated so it will uh, actually pull up all the repositories uh, for my particular user and uh, for example i wish to import this particular project i have to do connect so once this is done you would be able to see this project imported similar to this step like completed one and this is the project right now what we have uh, uh, imported so if i go to the projects so it's it's the similar structure what you can see on the github uh, the same structure is copied here uh, you have it in a gitlab itself the same uh, docker file uh, the gitlab ci file uh, then then there is a demo app folder so uh, this is the application uh, simple application where uh, we are basically running a deployment where we are uh, running a container which is going to pull the latest image uh, it has a single replica and we are just uh, exposing that deployment using a uh, services uh, uh, kind so this is going to expose that particular deployment and and we are using customization uh, for the uh, so uh, so we can simply uh, make few changes if you wish to uh, do for the deployment and the services like updating the uh, uh, tag name and all those changes so so customization actually makes it much more easier to do that so we have a customization file as well here so this is sample uh, demo which will be actually use for deploying it into the argo cd so so once you import this uh, project what happens is if you have a yaml file it's actually uh, going to trigger a ci pipeline for you so by default uh, right now i have few uh, pipelines already triggered for me uh, it's it's a it's something happened on the dev branch so you would be able to see if any changes i have made to the qa branch you would be able to see builds associated with the qa branch so all those things you can uh, definitely see here and as well as uh, i think sugesh already showed what you can see inside the build individual uh, cli commands and all those things and you can definitely debug uh, what are the issues around it so this is more uh, from the ci part uh, now i will probably go with the cd where the argo cd needs to be deployed so i have a minikube uh, deployed uh, basically a minikube cluster in my local environment uh, and and i have an argo cd namespace where currently there are no resources uh, which are deployed here so uh, we are going to basically deploy the argo cd application uh, in the argo cd namespace uh, so for doing that we have few commands which are cli commands so for running those commands what you need to do is uh, so argo cd actually comes uh, there are two different projects with argo cd currently going on there is simply an argo cd uh, project and there is also something called argo cd autopilot so the advantage with the argo cd autopilot over the argo cd is uh, it it actually uh, it actually uh, source controls basically it uh, stores the argo cd uh, uh, manifest files as part of your github repo Uh, which which you will not find it in your uh, normal argo cd installation so this is something will help you in terms of gitops uh, framework so what gitops usually follows where you store all the infrastructure uh, manifest files and everything into a github so that's that's what the argo cd autopilot is actually and it's it's kind of an uh, uh, not a replacement but it's kind of an uh, upgrade uh, you can consider on argo cd so you need to install this binary uh, into an environment right now i have it already installed uh, in my in my environment so i would just 
run this command to verify I have Argo CD already installed. There are a few prerequisites like you need to have kubectl uh, command line tool already installed and also a kube config which is already configured into your cluster. So that whenever you run the Argo CD, it's, it's going to deploy the configuration files and everything into your uh, kube config cluster which is defined. So those are the prerequisites. Also, you need to define a Git token as well as Git repo. So these are the few, uh, what you can say, environment variables which needs to be defined onto your CLI. So I already have this uh, defined in my environment. So, so if I do this, this is the repo. Uh, where it's actually going to store uh, once once you start with the Argo CD autopilot installation, this is where the repo, the Argo CD is going to store the manifest files. So if I go to the web, if I try to access, so right now I don't have this particular repo on GitHub. Uh, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this command. So here it is actually installing uh, Argo CD related uh, installations, service account, uh, RBAC policies and everything for you. And, and, it's, uh, and it's also going to store all this information also into your GitHub repository. So in case of uh, disaster recovery, uh, so this, this comes into handy for you. So that's the reason Argo CD Autopilot was introduced uh, and, and to have Argo CD also to be source controlled. That was the reason. So if I go to the repository now, I can see the GitHub uh, contents here. I can see the repository contents here. Uh, there is an apps folder. So you would see different apps located here. Right now we don't have any apps created. Uh, there is a bootstrap folder. So here is the Argo CD uh, uh, manifest files and everything. So, so for example, if I open this customization file, it's actually going to go to the uh, actual source code uh, for the Argo CD autopilot. And that's what it's going to use as a reference and pull those changes and get it applied to your environment. Then again, similarly, there are some cluster resources. And uh, we have this Argo CD YAML file, uh, again, the YAML file and the root YAML file. So, so this is the entire structure which is actually created for you once you execute the bootstrap command. And if I go back to the console now, it will actually generate you the default password for you. So now I, I wish to access the Argo CD console. So for, for accessing it, I just have to, I just have to run the port forward command. If I open 8080, uh, and I should log in with admin is a default user and password is something which is generated on the console. And this is what you can see uh, in the Argo CD. So, uh, so, so this is the source control basic uh, source code where the Argo CD setup is. Everything you can see inside. You can see the URL as well from where it is actually pulled up. So these are the different projects, uh, applications which are actually created by default for you. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to create few projects. And for example, we have, if I go to the repository, uh, we have two branches, so dev and the QA. So I'm going to create two applications for the dev and the QA uh, uh, environment, basically. So for doing that, I just have to first run this command which is for the project creation, Argo CD autopilot project create dev. So this is going to create a project dev. Then I need to import my application. So initially I shared a repo. So, so this is the demo application, uh, the service and a deployment that I need to deploy in the environment. So this is the reference what I'm going to use. 
So I just have to run this command, which is Argo CD autopilot, create application. Uh, I'm creating a simple hello world application uh, app. This is the URL, which is GitLab uh, P Godeka sample app new and demo app folder. So this is the uh, demo app folder. I'm going to create in, in a, a dev project. Then there is a destination namespace. So I am going to create my dev application into a dev namespace. And there is a wait timeout associated, which I have added. So I'm just going to run this command. Okay. Uh, let me try the other alternative. Uh, we will clone it from the GitHub repository. So we have a GitHub repository as well. Okay, so we have the application installed. So if I go to the Argo CD console, you can see an application here, which is already created for you. If I go inside the application, I can see a deployment, which is created. I can see a service, which is created. And uh, if I go to the app details, uh, you can see the repository uh, where where basically uh, this application is referenced from or the manifest files are actually stored. So if I go here, uh, initially the apps folder was empty, right? So if I go to apps, if I go to hello world, I go to overlays, dev. So I can see a few files which are uh, automatically created for you. Uh, it's, it's a customization file uh, where it's going to say like, uh, it's going to refer to the base folder so in the base folder, again, uh, there is a customization file, which is going to tell you like uh, it's, it's the original source code is from the GitHub repository. Uh, and that's, that's what we have here. So that's how it is referenced. And, uh, and you can see uh, the resources already deployed here. So now I wish to access the application. So for that, I can simply do again a port forwarding command. So I have my application deployed in a dev environment. Similarly, I'm just going to create uh, another project, QA project. So if we can see right now in the overlays, I can see only the dev environment. Basically a dev uh, configurations are stored here. There is no QA environment. And even on the Argo CD, uh, there is no QA application, which is already deployed here. So we are going to run that and create that one. I'm again using the same source code, uh, basically the same uh, infrastructure I want. And if I go to Argo CD, okay, we have an application or the environment created for the QA. Uh, so, so similar configuration you would be able to see uh, here as well. I'm going to do a port forward again. So I have same application deployed now onto two different environments or as well as into two different namespaces. So I can verify that as well. If I run kubectl get ns, I would be able to see like two namespaces which are created, QA and dev. And if I simply check the resources in the dev environment, I can see a uh, pod created, deployment created, and a simple service which is created. Uh, similarly, uh, same goes for the QA environment. Now, for example, uh, now uh, basically Argo CD follows uh, GitOps lifecycle. Uh, so you can see now a QA environment as well. So Argo CD basically follows a GitOps, uh, 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 
GitOps framework. And uh, for example, I want to make few changes. So, so right now I'm just going to make few changes directly uh, onto a GitHub. And instead of latest, uh, so by default, I have a Docker repository where uh, my images are currently stored. I can see multiple tags here, which are created. So currently it's using latest. So I would probably pick up something older one. So let me try this tag. So this is something I've made into a dev environment changes. So if I go to the application, if I go to the dev environment, this should actually pick up uh, changes uh, in, in some time. So let's, let's wait for this to happen. Okay, so it has synced it. Uh, you can see uh, it's it's actually creating another deployment, and uh, we have the new deployment which is deployed here. So if I so you can see a dev environment is having now different version of a, an application which is already deployed here. So basically, uh, you can follow a GitOps uh, across your uh, across this particular repository where Argo CD will automatically pull those changes for you uh, and, and it will get basically pull latest changes and apply it into your environment and keep the environment uh, with the latest. So in case if you make any changes or manual changes uh, directly into an environment, uh, Argo CD is going to basically validate the current state with the Git repository. And if it doesn't match, it's actually going to delete those particular resources and, and it's going to bring the current state to the desired state. So that's how it's going to work. And in terms of CI CD, what, what we have done is if I go to the GitLab CI file, so this is what it's actually going to do. It's going to just uh, do a set command and do a few changes here. So for example, let me try checking a few changes. Let me just uh, change my comment here. I'm just saying hi. And if I go to my pipeline, it should start the pipeline for uh, for the commit. And this is going to happen for the dev branch because I have made check into the dev branch. So if I go to the build part, so uh, the another thing what I have done is I have GitLab runners already configured on my environment. So you could use shared runners as well as uh, private runners. It's up to you. So right now, uh, if I open here, GitLab runners already configured here. So right now I have two GitLab runners and this, this particular runner is automatically invoked for you uh, by the build job. Now this is uh, totally dependent upon your CI file. So, so in, in, in this case, what we have is it's, it's going to create an image. So it's internally going to create another container for you, uh, which is this one. And it's, it's going to execute the stuff into those container. And that's how you can do it, do it in your local environment uh, or, or a private environment instead of having uh, shared runners on GitLab environment. So this is going to push the changes to the Docker Hub. So if I go to the Docker Hub, I should be able to see latest image. So this was just pushed a few seconds ago. I will go with the, I will check with the deploy part. So this is again going to run uh, in my local uh, GitLab runner environment. Okay. Particular environment uh, to be set. So you can set uh, environment variables here. So I have few environment variables already set here. So I'm going to make changes to uh, this particular repo. So I'm just going to run the deploy part.
okay i have to disable this because uh, this is something like uh, basically it's it's going to expose this environment variable if we want to run your builds on protective branches right now uh, i don't want this environment i want this environment to be exposed for all the branches so that was the reason so so that is what the actual aim was uh, if i go to the ci file so this is the part which is actually failing uh, it's it's actually cloning this trying to clone this uh, and i think i need to check why that's not working right now and it's it's once once it's going to clone this uh, it's it's going to the argo cd autopilot uh, directory where it's going to clone and and it's going to uh, pull the new tag uh, make few changes into the customization folder so i have this ci commit reference so uh, i'm making few changes into the dev, dev branch so so this particular variable refers to the dev branch so it's going to go to the github it's going to the apps it will go to the hello world it will go to the overlays it will go to the dev environment go to the customization and it's going to change this particular new tag uh, uh, basically with the new string so that's what the ci file uh, is going to do uh, and it's going to commit those changes and once those changes are committed a uh, similar thing what we did earlier like i made few changes directly into the customization file and it pulled the latest changes so that's what it's going to do for the argo cd excellent excellent well, well, thank you, Pradeek, for, for the in-depth demo, um, Sugesh as well for the presentation. I do want to give one minute or two minutes where we can try to answer some of the questions that have come up. Um, it looks like Sugesh has already started answering some of these questions. Pratik, if you could stop yeah. sharing your screen real quick, if that's all right. Yeah, sure, sure. And as we navigate through the q and I do want to throw up some of our upcoming tech talks as well that we have coming next week. So how to troubleshoot an application on top of Kubernetes. I will be here next week again, as well as with Pradeek. And another one, um, authentication, authorization in Kubernetes. That's going to be the following week and so forth. But we have many more tech talks that are up and coming. These are just the two um, that we are sharing today. And also Morantis is hiring continuously and always. So if you're interested in joining Team Morantis, um, that would be fantastic. I'm part of Team Marantis and Team Lens. So um, we would love for y'all to apply and so forth. But I know we're at the top of the hour, so I'll stop sharing my screen and see if we can answer any more questions. So in the Q&A, it looks like um, Maverick has asked, is there a way for auto sync in Argo CD? So basically in Argo CD, is, it's like you make any changes into a GitHub repository, it's going to pull those changes for you. So there is... Uh, like you don't have to do it manually onto the Argo CD environment. It's going to, whatever changes you make into the environment, into a GitHub uh, repository, like you create a simple manifest file, Kubernetes, because Argo CD understands uh, different different uh, 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 things. Like it, it supports uh, case in it. It also supports customization. It also supports hem chart. So whatever kind of structure you want, you can place uh, different kinds of manifest file into Argo CD GitHub. And it's actually going to pull those changes and apply it into your environment. Understood. It looks like we have one more question from somebody in the chat. Rajesh asked, with auto sync in Argo CD, is there any lag? Uh, frankly speaking, what I have observed, uh, it, it actually doesn't have that much lag. Uh, it usually takes like maybe five to 10 seconds. That's, that's the max what I have observed. So wow. you, you can just try it, uh, make few changes, and you would be able to see those changes immediately getting applied into your environment. Well, everyone, we are over time. I want to thank each and every single one of you for taking the moment out of your busy days to join us today. Um, we have many Tech Talks up and coming, as we have shared. We will be emailing everybody the slide deck as well as the presentation um, and also try to answer some of the questions that we were unable to get to due to timing. Um, Sugesh, Pratik, is there anything you guys want to leave the audience with? Thank you so much for, for joining us today. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, it ha- it has been a nice interaction with the audience as well. You guys have you good. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. And please feel free to connect with any one of us. Uh, we will be happy to answer your questions. In fact, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of your day wherever you are in the world. Thank you again, and thank you to our presenters. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.